Hey people, Indrid here and welcome to Age of Wonders 4, a continuation in the venerated series of Fantasy 4X strategy RPG type things. Let's get into it, eh? No messing around. I'd like to bring your attention to the top right of your screen, we have the Pantheon system. This is basically the metagame progression system that the game has. A couple of mechanics. First one is your leaders. You can also edit a name here, by the way. I called it the Empyrean for reasons. So once you finish a game with a leader, you can ascend them, which means they can appear in other games as leaders. You can, also, you can also ascend them as a hero, I think, which is quite fun. I was slightly bemused by this feature because in Age of Wonders 3 and Planetfall, you could just create as many leaders as you wanted and have them appear in any game that you wanted. But now it's locked behind this thing, which is a little bit weird. We've also got this progression tab. So as we gain levels, we unlock these realm traits down the left side here. And in the center, this big tree where you spend points and unlock mainly aesthetic things, hats, icons. But there are actual gameplay things in here like culture traits, for example. And items like this big hammer. I'm only level four. I've only completed one game. I wanted to go in mainly fresh with you guys and, and figure things out as we go. And that's what we're going to do now. New game it is. If you like what you see, by the way, I have a link in the description for you. You can pick up the game for a discount and help out the channel at the same time. There's also a code there that you can use to get a little bit more off. So thanks to those who check that out. Let's Choose do this. Destination. Technically, by the way, I do want to point out that I have been having some stability issues on this preview build. So if I get some crashes and stuff, I'm sorry. I'm just going to uh, have to roll with it, reload and, and keep going. Luckily, it does autosave every turn, and I'm going to try to remember to quick save a bunch as well. So, got some pre-made realms. One of them's labeled a story realm, and this is the campaign stuff, I think. I never played the campaigns in Age of Wonders games. Maybe I should, but we're going to be creating a realm. And if I go into advanced settings, here we go. So, I think we'll go six players. There is no size option. You just choose the distance between players. We'll keep it standard, I guess. You can name your realm. We'll call it Forgotten Realm because I'm clever. And you can do a purely visual portal thing, which is pretty cool, I think. I like this one. So in terms of traits, I'm mainly going to leave this stuff blank, actually. I'm going to choose land for geography. If we go to climate, tons of cool options, but this stuff changes the game so much. I kind of want a realm that has a bit of everything, you know? This is a good way to create a specific scenario that you think is going to be fun. But I want kind of a bit of everything, largely generic, anything goes, map. Same with this. I, I once tried to choose Demonic Realm. It says Fiend units are common. Super, super common. Like every single stack was the same three or four types of Fiend units. It was like too much. It would be good if this just added like a few really powerful demonic stacks, maybe. And it's the same with all of this stuff. Changes the game a lot. Um, there's this presence trait. These are basically scenarios you can choose with predetermined leaders on the map doing stuff. And there's a bunch of miscellaneous traits. I might choose small underground. In Age of Wonders 3, I turned the underground off because I thought it made the map... A bit too big and unwieldy and, and bloated kind of thing. So we might do this. It says mutually. Ex it says there's uninhabitable underground as well. I don't see that on my list. Maybe I need to unlock it. But we'll go small underground. Hopefully it doesn't screw over underground factions too much if they get spawned in. We'll go with that. Ancient wondrous past seems fun. But again, I don't want ancient wonders to be too common. You know, I want them to be rare, ancient and wondrous. There's a. Uh, these free city modifiers that change the way free cities work like quite dramatically. Big changes to the game. There's just straight up rule modifiers in here. Some of which may be cool. And unit modifiers that change the way units work in general. We're going to leave it uh, blank. Just going to be a land map with a small underground and everything else. Just kind of a bit of everything in there, please. That's what we're going to do. Oh, this. I love this checkbox. Rulers are generated. If you leave some, if you leave them to random, it will just generate a leader procedurally from nothing. 
which is very fun because after a while in the Age of Wonders games you're fighting against the same leaders over and over again. We're not going to use this for this game, but it's great to have. We're not going to be using teams. We're going to be, you know what, I'm just going to whack the AI difficulty up to maximum, guys. The game that I played was on hard and it was incredibly easy. Maybe I just lucked out with my realm or something, but it was super easy, that game. I don't know what happened with it. And uh, I, I didn't even see a tier 3 unit. It ended so quickly. So we'll just throw it up. And if I if I get smashed, that, that's fine. I'd, I'd rather have a game where I get destroyed and learn something than an easy game that I just kind of go, th go through the motions and complete, you know? Here's the victory conditions. Expansion is basically have as many provinces as you need and then build these, what they call beacons. And then you defend them. There's also magic which is kind of like a research victory condition. You research this super big spell and then you cast it over a number of turns and defend yourself. And there's allied victory. There's also, you know, just destroy everything, which is what I did. I made an alliance and then, and then the other guys just got destroyed. Okay. Confirm. Oh, you can do a handicap as well. Look, it's pretty cool. A little bit more customizability there. Your journey starts here. The lady likes to talk on every, on every screen, you guys. So here's the um, the pre-made leaders. We're going to create the whole faction, what of course. People's form? So there's the form system. I'm a little bit torn on this. Lots of awesome options. You've got rats, felines, goblins, moles. They all have these traits, as you can see, body and mind. But these traits are fully customizable. I think I would have preferred if each form had its own inherent unique trait that gave it a little bit of identity. Which we don't have. These are literally just aesthetic choices, basically. We're going to be humans, I know, very exciting. And we're just going to leave the default traits in. So we're going to have fast recuperation. So, yeah, regenerate an additional five hit points per world map turn. This could be really, really powerful. Because the healing is very different in this game compared to other Age of Wonders. Previous Age of Wonders games, and you'll see why. So this could be much, much more of a big deal. And also adaptable. Adaptable seems amazing. Just thirty percent more experience. I'll take it. What is their origin culture? So we're going to be playing as the high culture. We're going to be try to role play here as the good guys that vanquish evil. You know, that that fantasy trope. So this gives us order affinity. The affinity system basically dictates how your empire develops, and it also. Ha gives your governor's traits. As you can see, each of your heroes can govern a city and the the traits, the uh, the affinities that hero has determine what kind of traits the governor has, what it does. So we're going to be high. High humans. What defines their society? society traits here. Note that these society traits also give you affinities. And yeah, you can, you can mix and match them all you like and grow your empire in different ways. We're going to be focused on order though which means we're going to grow our order really fast. We might not be able to choose the order skills really quickly because we need Imperium to actually unlock them. So we're going to be choosing these top two because they give us good alignment and we'll see why that's important once we get to Devotees of Good. But for, for now, let's check out Chosen Uniters, shall we? So this gives us plus 20% income from Vassal, which, which, which we're going to try to do a lot of. Also gives us plus 10 good alignment and shield units and polearm units get plus 1 rank, which is nice. We start with an extra shield or polearm unit. I guess that's at just randomly chosen. Our shield unit, you see him on the right there, looks pretty cool. He's a tier 1. Our polearm unit is a tier 2. And we start with diplomatic focus, which is one of the empire skills. So everyone can get this, but we're going to start with it without having to pay for it. This gives us an extra whispering stone. Whispering stones are cool. They allow you to interact with free cities, which are basically city-states on the map. You can give them a Whispering Stone and build allegiance and get a bunch of stuff going on. We'll see how that works in the game. You can also give a Whispering Stone to your own cities to give them stability. And we're going to start with an extra one, which is nice. We're also going to take Devotees of Good. So our cities get plus 10 stability, which is awesome. And our Empire gains plus 5 Imperium per level of good alignment, which is why I want to stack good alignment so much. Because Imperium is really insanely important. You do so much with it. You unlock Empire skills, you found cities, you interact with free states, you can boost your allegiance with Imperium. You can even boost your population with Imperium. It does huge amounts for you. 
So we get plus one rank on our support units and our polearm units, and we start with an extra support or polearm unit. So that's going to be our society. The chosen uniters and devotees of good. Choose your first tome of magic. And here's the tome system. Again, this gives your empire affinity. And again, we're going to be sticking with order. So we have the Tome of Faith as a choice and a Tome of Zeal. These are the order tomes that you start with. But again, you can mix and match whatever you like. I'm going to start with Tome of Faith. Tome of Zeal is more militaristic kind of thing. It's a militaristic order tome. And this is more support oriented. But what is a tome? Tome is basically the way that you customize your own research tree as the game goes on. Basically, you research a certain amount of these and then it and it lets you choose another tome. And you research an amount of them and it choose another tome. So you're constantly evolving your research tree as the game evolves and that kind of thing. And you can mix and match affinities to get different bonuses, all sorts of stuff going on. So this is going to give us plus two order affinity. Going to get access to an abbey, which is a good province, a special province improvement for knowledge. And our heroes can use Mending Touch, which is a free action heal in one turn, basically in melee range, which is pretty fun. I like it. We also get access to this, the convent. And this is another reason why I wanted to stack city stability as well, because every level above unstable, as you can see, plus five mana, plus five knowledge, we can build this in every city as well. So if we can get our stability up, it's gonna be awesome with that convent going. So we're gonna select this. What is your ruler's origin? Now the origin of our ruler. We're going to go with champion. Champions. Reveal Oops. I needed to mouse over. There we go. What is your ruler's origin? All our cities get plus 10% gold and plus 20 city stability. Again, more city stability. All our non-hero units get 20% more experience. That's going to stack with our adaptive. What was it called? Yeah. Adaptable. Whatever it was. That gave us plus 30% experience for being human. And plus 100 relations with free cities. Because we're going to be interacting with those a lot. The Wizard King you can choose gets 10% more mana, more casting points per level of the Wizard King, and you can over channel, which means use two spell, yeah, use an additional spell this turn. So they're powerful magic caster guys. We're going to be a champion. And now, as you saw briefly, we're going to be choosing our leader. Well, creating them, I guess. You can randomize it. It's always fun to see. I think I want like an old fella with a staff to be our leader. Uh, so yeah, you choose your starting equipment here. We're going to go with a Spirit Staff. This gives us this single action attack, which can blind units. Very useful. Blinded units get less ranged accuracy and they get they can't do retaliations, basically. Also gives us... Where has it gone? A healing ability, which also puts regeneration. So we're going to grab that. Body type. That's just gender. Let's do some colors up here. Let's do bright gleaming yellow. Goodness. Yellow and what? You can't choose white here. Blue then. The emblem. I think this looks pretty nice. Let's do that. Oh, it changed what the fellow looked like. So, physique. Chunky. Let's just make a chunky old fella. You can do arm and leg length, which is quite interesting. Just make it like average. If I put arm in the middle. Yeah, that's fine. Arm in the middle is fine. Do we have any funky skin colors? We have red and like deathly white. Let's try and get like golden skin. Yeah, like that. Skin decorations, probably blank. There's some nasty scars. There's like smeared with blood. There's war paint. You can get gold things, but I think we're just gonna leave it blank. I like the pose. This is the pose that shows your weapon, which I quite like, so we'll keep that. The head, I like the old head we have. Is there another old head? Oh, there is. Oh, I like that one. Chiseled cheekbones there. Eye colour. I think there's a white. There we go. Choose that. Hairstyle. I'm, I'm thinking long hair. This old fellow's kept his hair. You know, he's divine. With a bun? Sure. With a little bun thing. Uh, beard. Beard looks alright. Oh, we could get a big long beard though. Yeah, big long beard it is. We're going to give him white hair as an old fella. There we go. Oh, we can make it even whiter, I think. There we go. Outfit. It's pretty decent. Some robes. I like the tabard. Is that a tabard? There's some more robes. 
are the robes double tabard. That's more armory. I like this one actually, I think. It's got a little bit of military armor and a uh, tabard. I hope that's a tabard. I've said it a lot. Uh, is this a helmet? This thing that's spinning around? It is. When I played my game, I just hit random, so I didn't look through any of this stuff. Either nothing. We'll, just, we'll get the weird shiny crown thing. Sure. And a cape. We Oh, we have no cape. We can get a furry cape. I like that one. That'll do. Armor color. Gleaming white. There we go. You can also uh, mess with your units. We'll just make them average looking, I think. Because I'm boring like that. Uh, yep, that's fine. Army colors gleaming white, damn it. Hair color. Yeah, we're all white-haired weirdos. I'm going to call these guys the Awakened, I think. Oh, we get mount type. Pony. Brown horse. Whatever that is. Wolf. Boar. Ah, gleaming white horse. So we're going to choose that. Your journey begins. I think Lord Divine is a pretty good title, but you can put a custom title in if you want. We're going to call our race the Awakened. If I can spell it right. There we go. And I think I liked the name. Nope. Gideon. Gideon what? You can lock these and then randomize the other ones. So to give us Lightbringer. Lightbringer is pretty solid. As you can see, it's generating names based on our affinity and stuff. So it's given us like good sounding names. Order sounding names. Okay, we'll go with maybe Dawn Shield. Yes, how generic do you want to be? And we'll, we will go onward. And hopefully not crash. In we go. It did save the game there on the left, I saw. And here we are, Gideon Dawn Shield leading the Awakened. The human got fast recuperation, adaptable is what it was called. High culture and society of chosen uniters and devotees of good. And here's the starting magic we get. Army heal. This is a strategic map spell. Which could turn out to be amazing, because as I said, it's harder to heal up. And this thing, which isn't going to be great at the start, it does some spirit damage, and it stacks up for each friendly faithful unit you have, which we're not going to we're not going to have any faithful units at the start. But as a thing, we can get later. Okay, here's the Age of Wonders. Four. This is our city. I do not like that name. We're going to choose something else soon. But going through the screen screen here, we have knowledge income. Which we use to research things. Let's choose our first research. So it's a pick three system, which I quite I quite like because you get, you know, you're not going through the same tree every time. Even if you choose the same tome, you're getting different choices here. You can spend mana to lock a choice in, so it'll be there the next time. And you can also spend mana to shuffle it around. So convents are amazing, but I don't think we're going to be building them super early. We need other basic stuff. The dormant enchantment is interesting. So since our high units start with dormant traits, this is a way to give any non-high units, i.e. things you haven't produced from your high culture cities, it's a way to give them dormant traits. Not all of them. Not, it doesn't list all of the unit types here. Like There's no shot units listed. There's no fighter units listed. No mythic units listed. But a decent amount of them we'll get dormant traits. I think we'll go with a chaplain. A tier 2 support which is awesome. Bless is great and it can heal and we're really good with support units. So we're going to research that. It's going to take four turns. We have Imperium income. Again as I said very important. Below it is the Empire development tree which it doesn't let you access yet for some reason. Whispering stones. We start with an extra one because of diplomatic focus. We can immediately give a whispering stone to our starter city. We have a city cap. Now you can increase this in the Empire development tree. I only saw one way to increase it though. I don't know if there's if the other affinities have ways to increase it maybe. We have gold and gold income used for units and city structures unlike Age of Wonders Planetfall and like Age of Wonders 3 you do spend gold on city buildings. 
mana income, and casting points for casting spells. What else we got? We got a bunch of tabs here, diplomatic, quests, heroes, magic materials, city overview, armies. I think magic materials is something that's maybe not self-explanatory. So there's a bunch of magic materials on the map split into ores, liquids, and plants. Each one, if you gain control of it, you can gain control of it by having it in your territory. You can also trade it from one of your uh, free city friends. If that free city becomes a full-on vassal, you just get access to any magic materials they have in their domain. You can also trade for it with other leaders as well. All have pretty nice bonuses. And if you get all of them in a section, you get this kind of a set effect. A set bonus, which are pretty strong. So that's a it's an, gives you another reason to kind of engage in diplomacy as well. I quite like it. And there's this, Rally of the Legions, which you can't do. This is a way to draw in units from your vassals and also from other structures like Ancient Wonders and stuff. And you get some cool things. Hero screen. So you can recruit more heroes, but you will pay pay a bunch more if they're over your limit and it's linked to how many cities you have so once we get our, f our second city up we can get another hero it, the game has crashed a lot on this hero recruitment screen for me so i'm not going to go in there right now and look at them so let's look at our army shall we have a scout unit they're not really up to much in terms of combat i like this new layout a lot in age of wonders 3 and planet fall this will just be a giant list of traits. But now they've broken it up a bit. You get like basic unit types up here. Unit types up there. And then you get traits down here. And they've split this thing up here. See that's a scout unit. And that it's awakened. And we need to find some pickups with you. Can I spot anything that's pick upable? I actually can't. That's kind of strange. Usually you have one. Usually two. I've seen in the many starts that I've done just able to be like picked up I'm gonna quick save and uh, where do we start on the map actually kind of centerish actually in the north this red border here is a enemy uh it's like an independent sp what do they call them spawners I can't remember I think I think we'll go west so what I'm looking for early game so there's a brigand camp marauder that's it they call him like Marauder Camps. So this is a sleep for now. A sleep for nine plus turns. Okay, maybe it's not exact. But we can go and crush that and get stuff. Oh, there's a cartographer's tent here. Which will reveal an unexplored location. Maybe it reveals an ancient wonder. So what I'm looking for here are free cities to interact with and ancient wonders. Because I'd like to put my first city beside an ancient wonder kind of thing so here's our army looks like we started with two daylight spears which are our, our pole arm unit tier twos as you can see compared to if you're used to age of wonders 3 or planet fall units have way more health pools in this way larger health pools i should say this is a tier two unit no levels oh i guess it started as a veteran because of our stuff it's got 87 hit points three defense two resistance i think it's because because it's some because it's much harder to heal they give you big pools of health so you don't need to like slow down as much and you can go from fight to fight a bit more so the dormant trait of this guy is guardian which gives it extra retaliation because by default you can only retaliate once you can't retaliate for every action point like you could in the other games it's worth noting that even if even if something doesn't have a dormant trait, it's worth awakening it to get the spirit damage bonus, as you see there. But our high high cult units will all have dormant traits, which is fun. So they're pretty solid. Got another one here. We have a Sun Priest. This is a support unit. We love support units. They can spirit blast a single action spirit damage attack. Mending Awakening, which is a big heal, and it awakens the unit for three turns. We can also do just a regular awaken which is, which is a free action which is awesome got a special defense mode which gives resistance to nearby units three resistance as well and a dormant trait of this guy is radiant light which gives it a chance to inflict distracted which makes it makes a unit get flanked basically so yeah we like this guy he's going to get lots of cool stuff as well as we research more things we have our shield bros dawn defenders look at these guys tier one 74 hit points five defense these are tough, tough fellas. 
Uh, I, yeah, frontline units seem to be really chunky and tough in this game, it seems. So their dormant trait is Shield of Light, which is amazing. More defense, more resistance. Not putting out huge amounts of damage. How does it compare? 10 to 14. It's not bad. These guys are, these guys are solid. They have Shield Defense, plus 3 defense against non-flanking attacks. So 8 defense against non-flanking attacks. They uh, also have yeah Shield Wall. So they give plus 3 defense to adjacent units, allied units, if they defend. Pretty good. And some archers. I haven't been super impressed with these guys. Don't do much damage. They do have Seeking Missiles. If they get awakened. Can I please do it? There we go. I love these nested tooltips, but they can be a little bit finicky sometimes. Which gives it plus 1 range and plus 20% accuracy. Yes, accuracy is back, like in Planetfall. Although, unlike Planetfall, melee attacks do not have accuracy. It's only ranged attacks. So yeah, we might not use these guys very much. I'm feeling like we're going to go for a melee and support oriented loadout for our armies most of the time. And we're going to take on this fight. These guys are actually in our starting domain, which is kind of weird. They've got a weird looking serpent thing and some other little fellas. Storm spirits. Okay, let's look at our city first, shall we? Let's change the name because that's really hard to say. I'm going to call it... Celestia. We can give it a Whispering Stone. It's already it's already orderly in instability. You can get all the way up to Harmony though. It's basically city happiness from Age of Wonders 3. The higher the better. You can just withdraw the, the Whispering Stone after a while. Whenever you want. So yeah, we might as well throw it in. And you can automate the expansion, that kind of thing. You can see how many provinces it has, structures it has. And, as you may have noticed, there's two build queues now. One for buildings and one for units. Fantastic change, I think. They use different resources, production for buildings, or structures as it calls them, and draft for units. And here's our income. We're size one. And we have 50 fortification. This is the siege mechanic. Basically, you need to break down a, a city's fortification before you can launch your attack. And there's ways to improve it and that kind of thing. So, first, I want a artisan workshop. More production, more draft, more city stability. Can't argue with that. There's a boost system in the game. If you look at the bottom of this tooltip, it says boost, build one quarry. So there's a way to lower the production. Looks like it's by 30%. I thought it was by half, but I guess not by 30%. But um, we can't build a quarry right now because we don't have the population for it. So we're going to start making this thing. And here is where you attract population with your Imperium. Just instantly gives you a population point. So, so strong. Imperium is so strong. And uh, we're going to immediately... Do we get another scout? Let's get another scout up. Scouting is important. Especially for us, because we want to interact with free cities a lot. Let's do this fight here. It's going to be easy, but let's manual it so we can see stuff. I am going to be use, um, making use of the auto combat liberally, though. To get, get through the game a bit faster. And it allows you to re retry combats like Planet 4, which is amazing. And for those of you out there that like the look of this game, but you feel like this combat system is a bit too involved for you. Not only can you auto the combats, but you can toggle auto combat on up here. So you can come and actually see your units do the cool stuff. And then you can you could like get in there and maybe cast a spell or something and then turn on auto combat again. I moved you a bit too far, buddy. I can undo that move. Put you here. It's a three action point system again. I've actually messed this up, but it's okay. I wanted to put you next to the defender, but we could put these guys next to each other. So unlike the other games, you don't get a color-coded hex. You just get on your cursor, you see. It's going to tell you how many action points you, you end up with. A big change from the previous games is you cannot move even one hex and still have three action points anymore. At least as far as I've seen. Maybe there's really fast units that can do it. Maybe. So everyone's in a big blob. Which is fine, I guess. It's an easy fight. And we are gonna use our priest to awaken our Dawn Guard. Give them that plus, plus one defense, plus two resistance. They are gonna go defense mode for shield wall. This guy's gonna go defense mode. Uh, this guy, Gideon, our glorious leader, to get the warding defense mode. And since you can't actually hit anything, you're also going to do it. 
which is going to be a moot point. There's no overwatch mechanic as far as I've seen in this. We're just going to end the turn here. Oh, one thing that really annoys me. One big pet peeve of mine is if I open the options menu. No mention of hotkeys anywhere. No hotkeys. I mean, Triumph Studios have been a PC developer for many, many years. You'd think they'd have this stuff down. But there's no hotkeys. I have to click everything, which is annoying. Quite annoying. I can cast this spell. But as I said, it's not going to do much damage at the moment. Uh -huh. And it will take, you know, mana and stuff. So this guy's just going to run in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is probably a large unit, isn't it? Oh, it's not. So putting the, sh putting the spears on it isn't going to make a huge difference. Okay. It looks pretty large. It looks pretty damn big to me. We're just going to throw you here. Spear can go here. Gideon. Since they have a single action attack, I can just run up and get as close as possible. And hit this thing at 90%. Also, yeah, we can get you into 90% 90, 90 spot. These guys can't do much. They can try and get a flank around, and you have to move up as far as you can. I can get 90% from here. It's only going to be one arrow shot, though. It's not going to be great. Everyone else shoots for the big serpent thing. I'm going to put my Dawn Defender on defense mode. And you... Which gives this guy extra defense, so when they get retaliated, it's not going to do as much damage, I hope. Crack. So they're doing air or shock damage and physical damage. I don't like those pop-ups, those damage pop-ups, because it doesn't show you how the damage is broken down. It just, it just shows you the total and, and what kind of damage it was. They're going to get around to get a flank. Note that flanks don't turn your units around in this. So you can't do the Age of Wonders 3 thing where you get constant flanks back and forth and really mess a unit up. Uh -huh. Speaking of messing a unit up, our Dawn Defender took a big chunk of damage there. We're going to do Mending Awakening on you. Refreshes the Awakening and gives you a big chunky heal. And we're going to get a flank here. I like this. And the Dawn Defender with three attacks won't be able to finish you off here. Yeah, it can. So we're going to go in. Again, I've got to get into my brain that defending units don't get three retaliations for each action point. You only get one. Oh, you can just kill this guy. That's pretty good. That gets our morale up. There's a morale system down here. Basically, more morale, more crit. Low morale, you can fumble. And if it gets low enough, they can actually rout off the battlefield. I'm not sure exactly how it works, because it seems like... Like that action there. Did it give everyone morale? Because sometimes I don't... Yeah, look, why did these guys get 8 and these guys got 10? And sometimes it, it doesn't seem to pop up at all. These guys only got 6. Maybe because they weren't close. Is it like a proximity thing? Maybe. Why have you got only 30% chance of shooting this guy? Oh, we've got wind barrier going on. Okay. That's not, that's not fun. We can stab him with a quick stab. Decent damage. You've got a terrible chance to hit then. But, um... Oh, 30% from there isn't bad. Why is it so bad from here? It's considered long range, I guess. We'll move there. We'll only get two shots, but there'll be better shots. Graze. And a graze. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, and I think we are just going to stab you with Gideon. What does he do exactly? Does he have a little dagger? He just punches and bonks him on the head. Okay. So pinned pop up there. That's because now that they're adjacent to a unit, they can't use their ranged attack or certain uh, skills like this restore. We're going to end the turn. Those guys are electrified. Note that I think... I'm pretty sure... Damage scales with how many individual models are in the unit now. I think? At least I thought that was the case. How are you doing? You could maybe get it done. See, there's no point in me using my heal at the end of the fight here like it, like you would do in the, in the other games, because it's not going to carry over to the world map. Oh wow, he just shot Gideon, you idiot. 
I don't. I think XP is just split between units, so I should just end the fight. Doesn't matter who is um who is getting hits and stuff. So look, that only did 10 damage, so it can't be per model. I thought that was a big change that they made though in in the preview videos and stuff. Maybe they reverted it. Victory, and we got some production. Oh, which knocked three turns off our artisan workshop. I like that. So you can sometimes spot things in the fog. Are we able to... S oh, there's, a, um, there's an ancient wonder immediately. This is a border of, I assume, a free city. So we want to get that way as fast as we can. But yeah, generally, we are going to send Gideon to pick up this stuff. Smash this brigand camp as well. Oh, another important thing. There's no longer... Oh, wait, that's an enemy, Damas. There's no longer adjacency in terms of battles you don't need to you don't need to run around in a triangle formation all the time you've got the there's a way to highlight it yeah basically there's a three hex radius and if this hex gets attacked you can bring any armies in within this radius up to a maximum of three so you can have three versus three fights no longer can you get four versus three fights I think we're going to knock this out first. Oh, do we knock this out first? There's a pasture up there. Okay, they're in a different... Oh, and a gold mine as well. Yeah, we're going to knock this out. So I really want that gold mine. These are ogres. Butcher ogres. You have this butcher's cut, which is painful. A chance to instantly kill them. Depending on how much missing health they have. That's a... Uh, Pretty nuts. We're going to try and auto it. Victorious and nobody died. Well done. We got some knowledge. That's cleared this province. Although I don't... There's nobody standing on the mine. So I don't know if it would have even mattered. But we got some knowledge for it. That's alright. And we got a level. To the levels, the uh, skill system is divided into sections. Warfare, battle magic and support. We're going to be doing a lot of support stuff with Gideon. And it seems really strong, to be honest. I'm going to take Experienced Leader immediately. More XP for everyone. I wonder if that interacts with our XP bonuses. I'm not sure. Shall we test it? How much XP do you have, buddy? Does it tell me a number? 36 required for next rank. Oh, both of them are the same. Okay. And that's our turn. Next, we're going to clear this, and then we're going to clear this. End it. Good stuff. Can you get down there? No. See, there's no way for me to hit a hotkey and do this move. We'll be okay. Still two turns from a light seek. You can hurry production. And maybe I will on the on the artisan workshop. It's like a turn's worth of gold. Let's do it. Let's accelerate that a bit. So now I can attract population, which is nice. And the the cost scales with how much food you need. I think I might do that because then we can get a farm and boost the vendor. Because I would like more gold. Storehouses are also obviously good. Hmm. Let's boost our population for sure. So here's the province system. You get one for each population, unlike Planetfall. And it's, it's been a good system so far. I thought Planetfall's system was really good, though. So it's not like I thought that was bad. So this, yeah, this farm also has, this tile also has pastures, pastures in it. Which gives us plus 10 food. Note that we, we would get the plus 10 from the pastures no matter what we put in this tile. But this province can only get a farm in it because it's just flat land basically. We can get ooh, a little bit of production from this iron deposit. And there's a gold mine up there. Gonna go farm. Also if we get a group of farms we, get the, we can put the special province thing. Although we don't really have a good spot for it because these are both going to be mines. All is required. 
Go and meet this, um... Yeah, Free City. Baroness Pam Darkwing of the Free City Murkwater. So we can interact with them here, see what they're like. They are neutral, which is fine. They like us quite a lot already. Ah, because we're a champion of the people, we chose a champion, so we get plus 100. And we share an affinity. They've got some order, so do we. These guys, we're going to be best buddies with these fellas. So here's the allegiance track. As you go up it, you get different levels of pacts and eventually to different levels of vassals. And to do that, we're going to give them a whispering stone. So now we are getting allegiance per turn. And in seven turns, we're going to get a pact of cooperation. We're going to be able to boost that with um, certain things. So there's Murkwater. Eventually, you can integrate the city and make it part of your empire as well. Well done for finding that, my friend. Let's veer south a bit. What is this? Oh, watchtower. Awesome. There's no defenders on it. We're going to take that then. There's some gold down there too. I like it. I like that we have a road going straight to Murkwater as well. We've got our artisan workshop because we accelerated it. But what are we going to get next? Do we storehouse for more food? Because I don't think we're going to be building a forester anytime soon. We're going to want the mines, I think. And then quarries and stuff. Forests are good. They give you a little bit of food and a little bit of production. But... I think I'm going to go to storehouse now. Just accelerate that growth and then into a vendor. Note that it takes the gold. Unlike Age of Wonders 3, it takes the gold immediately. So generally you don't want to queue things up because there might be an event or a quest or something where you need a bunch of gold. An evil presence lingers. Yep, I can see him lingering over there. We'll get to it. They call the turns days, which is interesting. Aha, we have empire development skills. We've unlocked this one. Destroying an infestation, which is what we're going to do. That's what they call them, infestations. Or conquering a free city grants a bunch of relations with other free cities. So, yeah, we'll grab it. So once we take out this Mor this brigand camp, we'll get a bunch of relations with Murkwater, which means our allegiance goes up more. Because hopefully it will push us to the next level of relations doesn't give me a breakdown of what they are, but we're respectful at the moment. Take this. Clear this mine. Only oh, got some sun priests. And stuff. Let's just auto it. Nice and clean. Well done, guys. And note that there's no option to sell rewards. You just gotta you just gotta take them. We got a crypt ring. I guess I mean we'll put it on Gideon. It's, it ought to be better for a more martial character that we might get later. But there we go. 5% crit chance. Do I venture on and take this out? Sure. Nice easy combat again. Got a warrior. What is this guy? It's a rat fella. Cool. Primal strike. First melee attack does a bunch of black damage. That's awesome. We're going to auto it again. Keep this moving. You start to see how important um, map healing is. Look at this. Noble Aegis. A tier 2 shield. We can't use it. But that's going to be cool for a martial character and a bunch of mana. Take the reward for sure. Now we head west for sure. Uh, yep, watchtower time. Give me some vision. That's a nice amount of vision. A couple of fiend units up here. And what are these guys? Entwined Thrall. Cool unit models in this game. There's some unit models they've reused from Planet 4, which is always fun to see. I'll try to point them out when I notice them. Pick up some gold, 62, okay. You can put this guy in auto explore, by the way. That looks like it might be a ancient wonder up there. Big tower thing. That looks like the same exact model, right? Yeah. Don't see any free cities in the fog. Maybe free cities don't show in the fog. Maybe they're one of the things that don't show. Not sure. I can see a chest over here. And I think since there's not a yellow marker thing on it, I think that means it's not defended. So we'll try and head towards that. Maybe we'll see that it's defended once we get closer. Our ruler is leveled up. Right back down to the support stuff. So I think I'm going to grab 
Twin Awaken is amazing. It awakens two units for free. Defensive training is amazing. Plus one defense, plus one resistance for everyone. I think I'm going to do that. That's going to help us, you know, not take damage between in battles and stuff. You see here, I can't equip the shield that I got. Oh, I should do a quick save. I didn't done one yet. New vet empire development skill available. Is there? Note that there's also a generic tree that you're going down at the same rate. That's where the diplomatic focus comes from that we already have. Maybe it's just telling me the same thing again. Because we got that. We can get another Whispering Stone from here, but we don't need, don't need it yet. Did I give a Whispering Stone to Celestia? I did. See, this is where I can withdraw it. We're up to 44 stability. What do I need for Harmony? I need 80. Okay, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough in, in the short term anyway. End the turn there. Our, what are they called? Lightbringers? Light Seeker. Yeah, head towards what I hope is a... Oh, it does have fellas on it. It's got some spiders on it. Well, balls. Here's another infestation. Oh, a, a tranquility pool, I think they call this. Or pool of tranquility. There's an excellent. They give you plus 20 knowledge. And they make research cheaper. They're really strong. I'm not sure if that stacks. So I think it makes research 10% cheaper. If you get multiple of those, does it all stack up? Seems really strong. More pastures down here. Another mine as well. But I want to come and get this infestation out of there. And maybe this cartographer's tent will reveal a city for us, maybe? You never know. I have noticed that sometimes these NPC stacks that are, are around these free cities, they become... They, like belong to the free city after a while. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Oh, I didn't point out that this uh, hero, this, this leader of this little city-state, they would become a hero for our empire if we were to integrate this place. Not sure exactly what you are. You a dwarf lady? Oh, oh, they're halflings. Okay. Looks like a halfling with a big staff thing. Which rhymes. Aha! Another Lightbringer. So we'll send you in the opposite direction. Find us some free cities. End the turn. Turn times seem really good. I mean, we haven't met anyone, so you'd expect them to be. But even when I did meet people... Ah, there's a little... There's a bunch of food down here, I think. Let's grab that. Even when I did have a bunch of met factions, it was, um, it was nice and zippy. Performance has been okay. I did notice some performance drops in sieges specifically. And I did see some reviews that mentioned performance issues. Hopefully they can iron that out for release. I assume there's going to be like a, a day one patch or something. I hope there is because I want these, these crashes to go away. Look at this thing. This looks awesome. It's a tier four. There are tier five units in this game, by the way. Dragons and stuff are tier fives. Underground passage over there. Probably another... Yeah, it's got a yellow marker on it, you see? It's going to have a thing on it. I think I just wasn't close enough to see the yellow marker on the other one. We have researched chaplains. And we're going to immediately start building one, I think. So we can get a one hex radius awakening everyone. We can give plus two vision range to our scouts. Might be handy. Might be worth doing. And this is just an in-combat healing spell. How much do I... Put value in this. It's three turns. And your scouts are only useful so, for so long, you know? Hmm. Let's do it. Let's give our scouts some more vision. There's also one that makes your scouts faster as well. Do I want to attract more pop? Don't need the spirit stones yet. This gives that... More income from vassals, but it's going to take a while to get an actual vassal. This is good. Instantly just gives you allegiance with all the free cities that you know. This is also great. More XP. We've got a lot of XP bonuses going. So I might save. But uh, attracting population is pretty damn good. Let's do it. And I can get this mine here so mines give you plus five gold 
but depending on what the deposit is, you get extra stuff. So this is an iron deposit, we get production. This is a gold deposit, we'll give you extra gold. I'm going to attract two pop, and I'm going to get both of these mines. And note that they build immediately. It's not, you know, don't wait until the next turn or something. I'm going to, I'm going to cast the, I'm going to have this heal ready to cast when I need to. So we're going to start casting. It's going to take two turns because you only have 30 casting points and that's a 60 casting point spell. So it's, it spends 30 this turn and 30 the next turn. Yes, I know. I knew about this. Thank you. An evil presence. I'm aware of the evil presence. I'm working on it. Thank you. End the turn. What turn are we on? Five. Oh, hello. We found Rakshagi. They are evil. They are not going to like us. We have opposing affinity. They also, they're already minus 725. I don't think a welcome gift is worth it. They're a demonic warlord. They like empires that break treaties. They like empires that execute prisoners. There's a whole prison uh, crypt system, by the way. They dislike... They're going to hate us. Absolutely hate us. Where are they? I don't know where their throne city is, but... They, that's going to be a problem. I need to be building units. Let's get a chaplain up. Let's get another dawn defender up. Spend some of this gold. Vendor, gonna need more gold. Oh, and I can get the tier two town hall thing, which will unlock our tier two units. Let's do that. It's boosted by the fact that I have five population. Oops. So I'm gonna throw that in. Tavern boosts our city stability. I need another farm for that. So farm might be the next thing I get to boost this. Stone mason I also like. Oh, that's also boosted by having two farms. Yeah, definitely a farm next. Pasha's down here, but that's too far away to annex next. We'll, I guess we'll just we'll grab this. Could get another mine, but I want that farm boost. Orders required. Give me this cartographer's thing. Yeah, it found an ancient wonder. Kind of far away. I did see a border there, though. Was that you? No. I wonder if that's a free city. Well, I mean, we'll head down there and check, eh? Grab this. Oh, that's production, not food. I'll have it. I'll take it. Vendor, can we rush you now? For 16? Yeah, we'll rush you for 16. Good, good, good. Now we're into this thing. Four turns. That's got an army on it. Another infestation here. What is that thing? Like a big porcupine. Oh, look, these models are the piglets from Planet 4. Retextured. They have like a different texture style in Age of Wonders 4. Planet 4 was a, a lot more grounded and re realistic, which I quite enjoyed. But this looks awesome too. Lightseeker over here. Oh, this is where we met them. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be a problem, you guys. Very hard AI, and they don't like us at all. What about you, buddy? You're neutral at least, but you are starting at minus 245, which isn't great. They're a revolutionary diplomat. They like empires with multiple races. Like empires with vassals. This is good for us. Dislike empires with larger domains. Dislike empires that trade their grievances. We could make good friends with these. I think I'm going to send them a welcome gift. Welcome gift. So now they are they are indifferent. We do have minus 25 because we just met. We also have minus 120 for inherent dislike. Which seems like it's bleeding away at 5 per turn. And minus 200 because they see us as a threat. Hopefully, they have a bad... Oh, they do have Chaos Affinity. I'm hoping they get into fisticuffs with Rakshagi. And we can team up against them, you know? Um, Yeah, so that's that guy. Let's go south then. Hello, a new free city. Pentacle. Oh, wait. Oh, they're hostile. They're just at war with us. Okay. Are they evil? They are evil. Clashing affinities. Yeah, we're not going to make friends with these guys. What you can do is... Are they going to send armies after us, by the way? You can come... You can conquer it and then release it as a vassal. 
which is pretty fun. Because if uh, what you do, if you conquer it and immediately release it as a vassal, you get you get um, bad modifiers because you're like releasing it under duress. You're like putting the knee, putting the knee, putting the knee against its neck kind of thing. But if you make it your city and then release it, it's like a peaceful vassalization. It does take longer, but I found that was a pretty good way to deal with that. So yeah, we're gonna have to come and attack those guys. They're not gonna like us. They're gonna they're gonna send stuff to us. They got a demon gate? What is this? It's a teleporter. Oh wow, I didn't even know that was a thing. Let's go off to this brigand camp here before we end the game. It hasn't crashed yet. Wait, I'm going to quick save now that I've said that. And yeah, it's an easy fight. We can auto that. We're getting nice XP here. I want to see what these guys get at high ranks. A phase cloak, eh? Plus two resistance and we can teleport. Superb. And a little bit of production for Celestia. Uh -huh. Which I like. We're turn six. We can get to Lover's Spring next turn. But if I... Select Gideon and say, hey, where can I put an outpost? It's going to tell me. I think I think we want to put one, put one exactly where we're standing, you know. It's kind of close to Celestia, though, isn't it? We might, we might be able to just snake Celestia towards Lover's Spring. It might be too close to put another, another city, you know. Where the hell would I put one, then? Down here, I think. Okay, change of plan. We're just going to get Celestia to take Love of Spring eventually. What does it give us, actually? We could put an outpost down and just annex it without putting a city. That might be worth it. So it gives us plus two city stability, which isn't going to matter if it's just an outpost. Oh, per fishery or farm. Or forester. Friendly units are healed. A bunch. Adds a bunch of fairies to your Rally of the Legions. This is awesome. Is there any way I can, like, claim this? I don't think there is. I don't think anyone's going to rush up here and build an outpost. Can I pick this up? Might turn around and see if I can pick that up. How many provinces away is it? We'd need to grab this, this, this. That's quite far. I think I, think I am going to put a city here. It's got a decent it's got decent room to grow. We can grow Celestia this way and this way. I'm gonna do it. We spend fifty gold to build an outpost. It takes two turns, and after that you spend Imperium. We're gonna need two hundred Imperium to turn that into a city, so we need to save that up now. Oh, our army heal is ready. We don't need to use it right now. But thank you for the notes. I said thank you. Cancel! Jeez. Yes, thank you. It's there. Close. Another ruler started negotiating. Okay, someone's trying to negotiate with... Murkwater. Sinrin did start. And we can see that they're behind us like that. Damn it. We need to get this as a vassal. Hopefully they don't overtake us. You can spend Imperium to speed this up. We can't do it right now. But we might need to, which will slow down this city being built. Okay, I know I'm just a lesser baroness of the eyes of in the eyes of the Lord Divine, that's me. But I need to learn the truth. After trying the stew you are famous for, my food tasted bloated with gas until the poor man ripped apart from within. What? Do you seek my demise? I do not. A tragic accident. I can pay them, gain some allegiance. I can, or we can do an affinity check. A four strength order affinity check. We currently have six, so it'll give us a 70% success rate. Which means we get 12 allegiance per turn. We can fail it though, which means we lose allegiance and lose affinity for six turns. That's bad. Let's try it. Come on, 70%. Yes, I have lost a 90% roll, by the way. That's excellent. That's going to speed up this a lot. Very, very good. 
Hopefully we can pull away from Sinran. How are you feeling about me now, buddy? 190, eh? So you can declare friendship. Costs 100 gold and it costs 10 gold per turn. I think I'm going to do it. This is going to boost our relations up to a plus 300 modifier. Even more if they also declare friendship. I'm just going to do it. We we need to be the good guys to get this guy to like us. Because I'm, I'm afraid of the weird... What are you? The weird cat lady over there. Okay. We're going to come and try to take out this monster then. For even more relations with free cities. Mm. You are going to move towards this pickup here. Good stuff. You... Just bomb through here. Oh, hello. Asgera Spine Splitter. Another evil chaos affinity person. They're not going to like us either. Minus 725. Goodbye. Ah, oh, we found a free city though. The free city of Pinnacle. They are good aligned. They are good aligned. They are going to love us. Okay, so we need to withdraw the stone from Celestia and give it to Pinnacle. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We need strong vassals helping us out here. So I don't like all these Chaos Affinity guys. Who's this now? Noctis. Okay, at least you're neutral. You have no Chaos Affinity, no Order Affinity either, though. You're a Harmonious Sage. Lacks empires that have alliances. Lacks empires that trade their grievances. Dislikes empires that defeated other empires and dislikes... We're not going to do any of those things. Let's send you a gift, buddy. You are Erudite Orcs. Okay. That's cool. We still have our army's, army healing spell ready. Yeah. I was insulted. Okay. You're starting, are you? Rakshagi. We've got this up to Pact of Cooperation now. What is that doing for us? Ah, we can now trade with them. Including their magic materials. I don't know if they have any. It's down here. They do. They have a silver tongue fruit. Oh, that's awesome. Plus one allegiance from Whispering Stones. You might get that from for 10 gold per turn. They also have rain, rainbow cleaver. More relations with everyone. I might get both of these. For 20 gold. Oh, I can't get both of them. I can only get one. Okay. Yeah, I'll take that one. I'll take that. We get the silver stone... Silver Tongue Fruit. We're far outpacing Sinran, right? Yeah, we are. They're not even neutral yet. I love it. Two turns, we're going to have Pact of Loyalty. Which is here. Which means they share vision. And allow building on claimed provinces, which is great. And they give us plus two points to Rally of the Lieges. Which we haven't been able to open yet, because nobody's given us anything in there. An evil presence lurks. Yes, they do. We're going to take care of it. Don't you worry. I am Gideon. The Dawn Shield. Uh, let me quick save. It does save at the end of every turn, I think. But I need to be doing a lot of that. Okay, we have an outpost. We, oh, we need a couple of turns to get the 200. Note that you can spend 100 gold and three turns to get a work camp that allows you to annex and when you actually make the city you'll start with that thing annexed. We might do that because we need to wait two turns anyway and starting with a population is nice. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to do that. I think that's worth. Do we go up here and clear this? I feel like I want to clear this. Hello, Light Seeker. Damn it, there's a stack on it. I knew it. Well, let's go through here. It's going to be slow going through the trees, unfortunately. Um. Oh, he found another ancient wonder. So this is a good place for another, another city. The Slitherer's Den. Hello. Oh, this is Ascara. Wow, we're really packed in tight, eh? Look, there's Ascara's phone city. Maybe. Look how close we are. It, see, it feels close. We have the Enchanted Crow Companion. 
Was that worth it? I don't know. Oh, here's the one that makes them faster as well. I don't think we want to get that. So this is a unit enchantment for our support units. Units enchantments, basically they add, they add a mana upkeep to units of that type and everyone gets the bonus. So our support units will become faithful, which reduces unit upkeep and they get mending touch. This is great for us because we're going to have a lot of support units eventually. We got the Atrium of Light, which means we can make... Well, we could if we had the money. We could make Sun Priests and Spears. We're still making a Chaplain at the moment, so we'll probably go into a Spear. Since one this once this becomes a city, we can get another hero for normal money. Shall I get a Wizard Tower? Oh, plus five Imperium. Yes, yes, yes. We have plenty of mana. Shrines available as well. Needs a quarry to boost. That needs a forest to boost. This has no boost. So I think I'm going to put that in my queue. Outpost founded. Yes, it was. Thank you. Army heal is ready to launch. Oh, so is this thing. Do that. Get that going. New empire skill available. Plus 10 gold from Vass. We don't have any yet, but we will. Now they're all have started negotiating with Murkwater. Rap Shaggy did. I'm surprised they're even bothering to negotiate with anyone. Not going to get there, Rap Shaggy. Oh, Sinran. Where happened to, to Sinran? I don't see them on a track here. Are they in exactly the same spot as the Rap Shaggy, maybe? Hmm. Another evil presence, eh? A ritual circle. There's a, an outpost from Rap Shaggy. I still don't know where the throne city is. Hit the end turn. We did not crash. I'm amazed, you guys. Very happy, but amazed. And I think we're going to leave it here for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me on my adventure in the Age of Wonders. Hey, wait, wasn't there a thing over here? What the heck happened to it? I guess we'll move over and see. Oh. Oh. Oh, you busted it open already. Balls. Are you all floating units? No, they're just, they just travelled over the mountain. Whatever. Fine, I'll go south a bit and then I'll end the episode. Thank you again for joining me on my Age of Wonders adventure. We might get destroyed on brutal difficulty, seeing as I've only played one game before. But uh, it'll be fun. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you, perhaps, in the next one, eh?